In today's video, I wanna show you something that I just recently discovered talking to a master plumber, something that he does with every new tank water heater, and it's something you can do to your water heater to make it last several years longer. It's this device right here. Now, if you look at the bottom of your water heater, you will probably see a factory drain port. Now, the advantage to this, as you can see, is the opening is massive. So when you actually go to flush your tanked water heater, you have a huge opening. I can see clear through this, whereas uh, with one that's factory, it's going to be a very small hole. So a lot of that sediment that gets into your water heater is stuck and it can't physically get out even though you are trying to flush it. Now, if you watched this previous video, you saw how much sediment we were able to get out of the factory installed one. But I wanna show you now how much sediment we can get after just doing this fix. And I'm gonna show you also how easy this is to install. So let's go down to our water heater and show you what we're talking about. All right, so we're down here at the water heater. So for starters, if you look in there, you will see just how small that opening is. And by means of comparison, this opening is just about the same size as this whole thing. And as you can see, all we have the opening is that little ball for the valve in there. So the thing that uh, scares a lot of people is taking that out. We don't have to fully drain the tank to do this. All I recommend doing is first pre-taping this. I don't recommend the tape that comes with it. Um, this blue monster is the best that you can get. It's a blue tape and you can get it in different thicknesses. So we're gonna pre-wrap that. But for starters, what we're going to do is we're just gonna set this to the pilot position here and we're going to turn off the water to our water heater. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna create a suction in here. So it's not gonna shoot out of there like a million miles an hour. It's going to create a suction and it's just going to kind of gurgle and dribble out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a few rags down here to catch it. And we're gonna be quick about putting this new valve in place cause it's gonna be taped. So we're just gonna swap it out real quick and it's as easy as that. Then we're going to reflush this and show you how much sediment we get out of it. Okay, so to start with, we're going to put our tape on. What I like to do is hold this with my right hand and have this um, feeding towards me on the bottom. We'll hold it with our thumb right here, kind of smooth it out. And we'll just do maybe two passes. You don't need to put like six passes on here. Um, rip it off and then smooth it out and we're ready to go. This is ready to be installed. So we're just gonna quickly remove this, thread the new one on, and we'll be golden. Obviously, we're gonna make sure this is off as well as our cap on as well. Now, before we swap this valve out, it's important that we flush the pressure out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a pot or a pan and we're just gonna flush it out. It'll be about a gallon of higher pressure and then all of a sudden it will get super low pressure and that's when we're going to swap this out. So we've got this drained. We've got all the pressure taken off. Just, uh, we got about a gallon of water that came out. Just like that. Now this doesn't have to be crazy tight. That Teflon tape is gonna do most of the work here. And that is it. We can go ahead and turn our water back on, refill the tank. Um, we're going to go ahead and flush it. So we're going to leave the water on, but we're gonna leave this on pilot. And then after we're completely done with our flush, we'll then turn this back on. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but you can see how much junk and sediment is on the inside that's actually kind of trapped. But look how tiny this hole is. That is wild. I'm just gonna open this up to you and show you for reference how small that is. You know, it's smaller than my pinky. I can't even fit my pinky in here. Whereas this one is going to be way better in terms of flow and how much sediment. So let's check it out. Let's hook our hose up to this. We're gonna run it outside into a t-shirt and a bucket and see how much we can get. All right, we got our bucket ready outside. I'm gonna open this up and see what we got. 
All right, so we got full flow. Let me see how dark that water is. We're gonna let this run for a solid uh, maybe five, 10 minutes, and then we'll see what we got. All right, we just turned this water off and look how much um, larger pieces came out. Um, none of this came out before. Um, and granted, had I had the bigger one on when I initially flushed it, I probably would have gotten even more than this, but that's still a sizable amount of junk that you can get out of your water heater. If you're doing this every two years or even every year, you can save your water heater from having all of the sediment inside and make it last a lot longer. Now, something that a lot of people mention is that once you start tampering with this, sometimes they won't seal. But the reality is, is you can get one of these, no problem. So in case something gets bumped, you can throw this on and you don't have to worry about this ever getting turned on by accident. Now, obviously, in addition to this product, I highly recommend changing out the anode rod. That's what causes a lot of that sediment is that anode rod sacrificing itself due to the minerals and things in your water and all that stuff settles at the bottom of your tank. So changing it out or even going to an electronic anode rod is a great thing. Unfortunately, on my water heater, I wasn't able to get it out. It was so stuck in there that I couldn't get it out. So maybe in a future video, we'll show you how to replace an anode rod with one of those electric ones. But for the time being, this is an awesome fix and I highly recommend it. Well guys, it's that easy to do this upgrade on your water heater. Now for reference, if you look at these, you can see a huge difference in the amount of volume that's able to go through these. So this is gonna make a big difference in how much sediment you can get out. Now, as we discussed earlier, replacing the anode rod is equally as critical as flushing it on a timely basis. Now, if you're interested in learning how to do that, but specifically replacing it with an electronic one that is much superior, you can find that video right here. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.